we have a friend, a mutual friend named Josh, and he was in this relationship with uh, this woman. And uh, it was around Christmas time. Uh, she got him that watch for Christmas. For Christmas. For yeah. Christmas. And then he broke up with her. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> And so then she posted that watch on like a Facebook marketplace or whatever. And I know I knew it was the exact watch because I knew her and like he told me he told me about it beforehand. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm going to buy that. <laughs> I bought it. Uh, and then I sent a photo to uh, uh, Josh like right after. I'm like, dude, thanks for the watch. <laughs> oh, my God. Funny. <laughs> he he laughed. He laughed. It was funny. <laughs> That's good. I'm yeah. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> there's a good sense of humor there i mean it's yeah. just it's just a good joke yeah yeah it's funny because i don't even think she remembered me she's like all right there you go very quick exchange n- no pleasantries and she's okay bye, bye. right yeah Thanks and for i was the like watch. okay maybe you don't remember who i was a very classic facebook marketplace meetup no yeah. kidding yeah. here right. you go where's my money i gotta fucking go it's it was... so dirty feeling on facebook marketplace you're like you want to <laughs> meet up by like the dumpster behind the quick trip well mine was not so dirty it was <laughs> at a a uh, uh, nursing home. Oh, ah, yeah. cute. Hey, man. Yes. Some shady shit happens at nursing homes. That's yeah, true. dude. That's true. You can't trust Euthanasia. that Euthanasia. She stole the watch from one of the old <laughs> old folks. Yeah, oh, that would be <laughs> awesome. Trying to... We're breaking out a scandal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. How many watches do you think she sold that day? Come on. <laughs> at least 13. <laughs> Does Josh want to be omitted? I don't think he cares. I'll oh, ask okay. him. I'll send him a text. <laughs> Our friend, <laughs> Our friend <laughs> omitted. <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, one sponge <laughs> the SpongeBob one where it's like name and address withheld. <laughs> he he actually listens to the podcast, uh, and I would love to give him a photo challenge. Oh hell wow. yeah. Shout him out. Yeah, yeah, lay it out. All right, Josh, this is a shout out to you. Uh you know who you are. Give us uh this is your photo challenge to to send to us. Uh, send us your favorite color. My guess was green, and I want to see if I, I got it right. And if I didn't, then I'm a bad friend. And I will accept that. An object of that color. An object of that color. Or, I mean, you could just send us a picture of the color. But yeah. That would be boring, so yeah, don't yeah, yeah, do sorry, that. Sorry. Don't, don't, don't just send us like send a, us a photo. swatch. Yeah, don't do not do that. Send us, <laughs> send us a, 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 like an item of your favorite color. Yes. And you know what? I, because I know you can, be artsy with it. Uh, yeah, you're in a new area. You're having a good time. Be artsy with it. Impress oh, us. Oh, that'd yeah. be fun to yeah. like call out to like our fans and tell them to like send in an artwork, and then we can talk about it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So this one's. We'll start with Josh then. Josh, this one's to you. Send us a good photo of your favorite color. Yeah. No pressure. No pressure. It's just a <laughs> lot of fucking pressure. Yeah. It's the it is our friendship. promotional material. So yeah. <laughs> All photographs sent to the members of Room Tone Podcast are liable to be posted on social media. Beep. <laughs> Name and address withheld. Uh, but yeah, that's my watch story. It is a heartbroken watch. I. It's a nice watch. It is a nice watch. It's very swanky. I love my watch. Yours so, is more boho daddy. I really, that's yeah. That's exactly what I was going for. Nice. I, <laughs> you're, you're moving away from. No, no, no. Gentle indoor woman. Okay, gentle indoor woman. <laughs> wow, I don't know why it was hey, so. Gen- he has bi wife energy too. You do have bi wife energy. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. I have, well, I have bi wife energy. Well, it's because I have a bi wife. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that'll do it. Yeah. And, you know, gentle indoor women can be boho daddies. Maddie, I agree. He does have a boho daddy vibe. And I don't really know what that means, but I, I sense it from him. I sense it. It's yeah. funny because I am bohemian. Shut up. You're not bohemian. <laughs> yeah, I fucking am. Really? What's yeah. bohemian? It's, Where is that even from? Yeah. Where's bohemian from? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, bohemia Oh. <laughs> is where bohemians are from we're so stupid we were like where is bohemian from bohemia oh, oh go on right all right which is no longer the name of that country what is it constantinople it's, it's germany isn't it <laughs> yeah it's now called the czech republic Ah, oh. yep. so you're a Czech Republican? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew you were Republican, you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm mm. Czech. I'm partially Czech. Well, mate, huh. my dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, oi. No wonder I'm <laughs> mediocre at chess. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> part check. <laughs> Got that out. No, we're not cutting that. We're just keep, keep that in there, Swain. <laughs> Should we do introductions? Sure. But first, pause for room tone. Room Tone Podcast is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Is it now? Oh, I guess the kitties. Yeah. <laughs> one, of them, one of our audience members is licking themselves. My name is Austin Swain. I'm an animator and a video production specialist in the commercial world. And I'm a lot of fun to talk to. Is it from the bubble? It is. Okay, I don't remember when, but that makes sense. Yes, is so- it Fred Armisen? The bubble? No. Oh. Um, yeah, in Austin, I'm sorry. I knew you wouldn't get that reference, but yeah, Maddie and I watched the bubble last night. <laughs> I you- set you up to fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I knew you wouldn't get that. I this. wanted to see your fall I'm firsthand. Glad Maddie was there right away because it would have been, I didn't want to draw it out. My name is Maddie. Oh, I've been drinking a. <laughs> <laughs> and then my name's Maddie and I've been drinking. Hi, my name's Maddie and I've been drinking. <laughs> um, no, I experimented with a new drink. It's super fruity. It's peach schnapps and Arnold Palmer. And it's very good. So I would recommend. And if Jake ever listens, this is a good fuzzy navel alternative. Because that's oh, my fuzzy navel boy. To those mm. fuzzy navel drinkers out there. Right. I think it's better than a fuzzy navel. Oh, oh snap. if we're gonna get if we're gonna get loud about it, if but be controversial, yeah, <laughs> yeah, would, those are the people I do not want to piss off. The fuzzy navel people, uh, yeah, oh, totally. They're they probably... have nunchucks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I will take your word for it. Yeah, I yeah, nunchucks and spiked collars. Yeah, <laughs> they're ready to go. Who's that for? Who's the spike color for? It's for all of us, babe. It's for yeah, it's for everybody. <laughs> it, <laughs> oh my god, we went to Hot Topic yesterday, and they had yeah. a T-shirt of Danny Phantom, and it said, "I'm going ghost." And oh I was god. like, I should get that just for like the sexual awakening <laughs> joke, like for somebody to be like, "Oh, did you watch Danny Phantom?" And me to be like. Yeah, you want to hear about my relationship with Danny Phantom? All right. <laughs> I now use that shirt as a cum rag. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. It was a cartoon. <laughs> ah, that was very good. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Austin Ropez. <laughs> 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 we like to well, keep it loose here in the room. Tone what podcast. was your sexual awakening? God, that's, I don't. That's, that can so, be a different topic. Right, don't step on yeah, his intro. That's, yeah, that's, that's, sorry, yeah, sorry. That's a whole tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I think we should talk about it though. But you go on. Okay, my name is Austin Oropesa, and I rediscovered my love for the movie The Iron Giant. Hmm. We watched it recently, and I would like to get your guys' take on it uh, a little bit later. Love that movie. One of like three movies I've ever cried to. Yeah. That's a fair qualification. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I can see it. It's got so much heart. I really enjoyed watching it Mm -hmm. with you. It was so much darker than I expected. Yeah, it really was. Oh, yeah. It went, it went ghost. Listeners, uh, (laughs) (laughs) listeners, let us know in the comments if you would like to hear all the movies that Room Tone crew have cried to. And we can talk about it next episode. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't even think I could compile a list. I don't think I need the audience to tell me. I think I'm just going to tell them. <laughs> Do we want to talk about that? That would be fun. Sure. I think we've talked fun, about that before. Fun concept. Not here. Not in the podcast. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Okay, but first off, what was your sexual awakening? This um, doesn't need to go on the podcast or whatever, but I'm I'm speaking to you now as a friend. I don't care. <laughs> I, 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 I personally don't care if it goes into the podcast. I'm trying, I'm, I'm just trying to, like, think of, like, that, because I feel like, I don't know what, what what exactly my sexual awakening was. No, yeah, I don't know if I... Sad day. Do you know? Oh, you guys are so boring. I guess you don't I, remember I just... your sexual awakening? Wow, is that just, like, a bi girl thing? I have a lot going on. <laughs> I'm a very busy guy. Um, I don't know what a sexual awakening is. What would you define a sexual awakening? I don't awakening? think so. Uh, uh, my first time feeling like aroused. Oh, I definitely don't remember that. What? I you guys are boring. That. No way. Maybe it is a bi girl thing. Because on mm. TikTok, it seems like only bi girls remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like how people would say like Shigo or like Fox Mulder. Right. 
it's uh, it's a little less special for us guys. (laughs) That's so sad. I don't know, Misty. Misty. Oh shit. Boring. Hold on. Hold on. I knew I shouldn't have said that. Misty was. When I was a Missy's kid, I Missy's a thought, fucking cunt, okay? <laughs> I feel weird saying Missy, Missy's cute, like, now, because I'm a fucking adult a, man. A grown-ass yeah. man. <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's, like, 10. <laughs> the look of, like, shame on your face when you said that you were, like, because you're a grown-ass man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ashamed of you. I'm the one who fucking said it. Yeah, I mean, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, you guys could be ashamed of. I don't. I wouldn't even say that's my sexual awakening, though. I would just, I, I was just agreeing, like, hey, that's a good, that's a good one. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you that's guys as, really don't know. That's as far back as I can think. Yeah. Wow. I, well, mine was definitely Danny Phantom. <laughs> I can say with one million Danny percent Phantom. certainty. I'm really excited for you. At least to, just to even have that uh, awareness. Yeah, I'm very aware. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've started like six different conversations and not finished any of them. We were talking about the bubble. We're talking about the bubble. We were talking about. Oh, were we going to uh, talk about the movies that have made us cry? Oh, the movies yeah. that have made us cry. The fucking hell. I, it's like, I don't even think we get off topic that hard and then we totally do. Yeah, all of a sudden we're bashing Misty from. <laughs> Holy shit! That was like a world record wheeze. That yeah. sounded crazy in headphones. That was nuts. Uh, we're keeping. <laughs> oh well, we were talking about Stevo first. I was. Ta- I recommended my show. Yes. All right. So, Aust- <laughs> uh, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. What was the first movie that made you cry? Oh God. See that I probably can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was special for as us. <laughs> Tears aren't as important as sex. Um, if you guys know, you can go first. I, I know the, the three, or at least from what I remember, these are the three movies that made me cry. And they're all really weird. The Iron Giant. And it wasn't even like when the first time I watched it. It was like, I think when I was like 20 years old, 20 okay. or 19. Sure. Uh, I was just going through a lot. And like uh, when Hogarth was like, you are who you choose to be. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's- <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, oh no! That's, it is a great line. Yeah, it's yeah. a great message. So like, I I I teared up to that one. Yeah. Um, I teared up to uh, an Avengers Infinity War when Spider Man disappeared, just because like I wasn't expecting him to go. I was like, oh hey, I knew he was gonna come back too. Like it was it was just like it was such a whirlwind for you me. You weren't ready. I wasn't yeah. ready. I really wasn't. The uh, world wasn't ready. So you're not alone. Exactly. And then the first movie I've ever cried to that I can remember uh, was Elf. <laughs> I remember being in the theater uh, watching it. And I remember the scene came on where Will Ferrell's character like runs in to the office and like he's just like cheering like I'm in love and I don't care who knows blah. You know, just really excited. Yeah, it's huge. Just got done with a real nice date with. Zoe de Chanel. Yeah, it's a beautiful scene. Beautiful scene. Uh, pisses off Peter Dinklage, respectfully. I would be pissed too, being called an elf. <laughs> uh, and his dad just gets so like infuriated with him that he just like screams like, "I never wanted you! Like, get out of my fucking life! Yeah, whatever, whatever." Just tell him to get get lost. Yeah. And he does like, not say fucking. Yeah, no, he doesn't say fucking. Uh, wow, this movie got crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, when I was sitting in the theater, I remember like a tear just like falling down from my on my oh. face. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh my no. god. Oh no. <laughs> this hit a I have hard. daddy issues. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Still one of my favorite Christmas movies. I think I watch it every year. Oh, it's so good. It really is. I, John Favreau <laughs> directed that. John Favreau's a boss. He, he actually really is. is. Yeah. It's crazy. I when I first thought of John Favreau, I thought like, oh, you know, the guy who like directed Iron Man. And Which Iron Man was very good. The Iron first Man was Iron very Man good. Was it was it good. was the start of like a huge cinematic universe, but I didn't realize how much like pull he actually like had mm-hmm. in it and like how much like investment he had into it. 
I don't know if he gave up creative control for Marvel um, or if he still had it or whatever. But, you know, then he goes to, like, the Mandalorian and, like, the Mandalorian is just fucking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even a big Star Wars nut. And watching that just got me excited for Star Wars. (laughs) It was crazy. And then also just, like, behind the scenes, it's so cool to see. I forget that he directs that. Yeah. And and I didn't know he directed Elf. And I'm like, holy shit, he's done, like, a lot. And then, like, you just kind of look at every of all the projects that he's done. He's just, like, a big nerd having fun. Yeah, he's got some range. And, yeah, you're right. Big nerd having fun. I mean, he's just out there crushing it. No kidding. Just living his life. if I could meet John Favreau, I totally would. Fuck yeah! And he like and he plays it so cool. He really does. Like, and he's, he's a good actor. And he's yeah. a good actor. Yeah, yeah. I just thought he was like a can't be like oh hey we're gonna make fun movies for the family type of guy, which he he does. He does both of it. He, yeah, he's great. He has range. Yeah, he's great. He's not limited. They made a reference to John Favreau in the Judd Apatow movie The Bubble. It's true. Now streaming on Netflix, starring David Duchovny. Yeah, it was a, it was a great joke too. I wanted to ask you one question about that movie. Glad we came back full circle. Here we are. I remember you and I had a conversation not too long ago about having COVID in our media. And based on the trailers for that movie, it looks like COVID does play a very significant role. Yeah. How did you feel about that? I didn't like it at first, but as it went on, you just kind of got used to it because it started to feel like it was still a different cinematic universe yeah like it did it's just because covid was happening didn't make it feel like relatable to how i live my life whatsoever yeah Yeah. like it was still like a totally different universe just because covid was there so you really like got used to it but i think they made fun of it enough that it worked i I (laughs) agree (laughs) so and i've always stood by like your reasoning for not wanting covid in like media Mm -hmm. it's a very similar reason to like why i have been really resistant to having like smartphones and social media and things in movies it's because like you've kind of said with covid like you don't want them to live in your universe Mm -hmm. like you want them to be in their own universe separate from our story so Mm -hmm. that we can kind of distance ourselves right you're looking to uh detach yeah dis- yeah i don't want to be on this yeah. planet yeah it's a esca- it's escapism <laughs> yeah it totally is mm-hmm. but i still don't like seeing airpods in movies everyone ha. <laughs> just so everybody knows why because they're too dorky looking they just don't look good they don't That's like i fair. totally get them yeah and they're great for society but they don't look good mm-hmm. so no, keep the fucking string on the headphones, people. Oh, it, you're going in, full string. In movies, oh. yeah, or like headphones like we're wearing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, fuck AirPods, they're so weird. Some of the things that I think the bubble did really well, Maddie and I were talking like the whole time, that there are elements of it that really felt like what we wanted our movie to be. Mm-hmm. And so I would recommend it to you even just for that reason, and I'd totally watch it with you. Right. Um, bring Austin on. But uh I I won't give any spoilers here, but like the basic premise is that it's a group of actors who are coming together to make a motion picture. And so it's a group of people who are all very different, who are then forced to live together for an extended period of time because of COVID. They can't leave and they basically have to come together to like make this picture and like do this stuff that they don't really want to blah, blah, blah. And then the scandal breaks. Yeah. And like. And so you're kind of getting that behind the scenes look into like the movie, which is like a cool tie into what we are doing here. Um, But it was also just like a house full of crazy people doing weird shit. And what it did really, really well was it would cut from scene to scene so, so chaotically. Yeah, without any rhyme or reason. It was just like. Like, you would just come into a conversation and get, like, three lines of it, and then you'd cut away to, like, a scene of the movie, and then you'd cut back to, like, the same people doing something completely different in a different room, and, like, it had no rhyme or reason or, like, sequencing. Like, I had no idea of the passage of time, Mm -hmm. but it all... But it made it feel so chaotic. Yeah, but... And it all worked. Yeah. Because it's, like, they... The characters themselves were kind of losing time, and... And, it, you know, it wasn't really shot like a horror. Like, it was shot, I feel like, actually very similarly to ours. Like, it was shot like a comedy. Mm-hmm. But just, like, the way that they cut in and out of scenes, like, so carelessly, like, really had a good, like, chaotic energy to it. It also made a lot of good jokes. Because jokes are usually funnier when they, like, 
end the story. Yeah. Like if there's the punchline and then you move on. Mm-hmm. So they really helped like accentuate every funny thing that they made happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being able to have short scenes allows you to like end on a good line and then zip away and do something else. Right. Mm. Yeah. It was, it was multiple times. I thought that it felt similar to our film. So mm-hmm. cool. I'll check, I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. At, uh, that sounds like a good time. By the way, I'm not going to be the only one called out here. What films have you guys cried to? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. You fuckers. Oh, uh, yeah. No. I looked it up. I had to look up which one came out first. This is the earliest memory that I have off the top of my head. I might mm. have to think about it more. Give it to us. But Bridge to Terabithia. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, fuck that. That surprises That me. girl was the only good part about that movie, and no they kidding. fucking killed her. Yeah. They fucking killed her. Straight Can you up. believe that? It was in a, a children's movie. It was a bold choice. It's it a bold choice. Yeah, mm. I cried like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was debating, bet- or what I didn't know what came out earlier, I also cried at Wally. Oh, Just because God. it's so sad. Was, yeah. it, w- was it the scene when she was like trying to revive him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not good. Mm. Tough ride. I've, I also cried watching Avatar. Fun oh, fact, yeah. Because really? I hate that guy so much. Yep. Which one? The bad guy. Like uh, the guy who's trying to kill everything. Yeah. Because that's like my least favorite type of person on the whole planet. And I just hate him with such a passion. Yeah. And I cry when I'm mad. Yeah. Like I don't always cry just because I'm sad. Like if I get really pissed off, I start crying. Yeah. So yeah, I totally angry cried at that guy. Whoa. He is potentially like one of the worst characters ever written. Yeah. He's awful. He's, he's a, a goddamn a- nightmare. Worst character as in like just bad just as like a horrible person yeah he has no redeeming qualities not bad not like poorly written okay yeah no just like a guy i fucking hate yeah Yeah, absolutely no redeeming qualities yeah Yeah, and like i can't think of many characters that piss me off more than yeah mr companyman or whatever the ceo of big big brand inc Mm -hmm. yeah in avatar i don't remember the name (laughs) of anything Big branding. Can you imagine? Look, well, they're looking for unobtainium, so I figure I'm not too far off. That's fucking fair. <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> I really do. Not just because of that guy. I think that movie is fucking dumb. Really? Yeah. I enjoy it, but I understand. Uh, I do want to go on the Avatar ride, though. It did That's not fair. make me cry, though. I will tell you the. It's funny because I've cried in a lot of movies. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But like, maybe it's so many that not many actually come to mind. Uh, like that's why I feel like I can't formulate a list is like I don't really make what was the latest I'd like to tell you the first (laughs) oh so you do remember the first I do remember the first oh okay okay. yeah I just don't remember any like get on with it then well fuck me (laughs) okay can you give me the first and the last yeah I can I know the last thing you cried to I think oh okay perfect I think this is why this is why I keep her around (laughs) was it his birth video (laughs) yeah I would I cried too (laughs) I cried (laughs) Uh, so the first movie I cried to was a movie called Pay It Forward. Oh, okay. God. Which, <laughs> which this, is this like... This just scr- screams Christian, by the way. Oh, yeah. Screams. That's fair. It's I think it came out in the 90s. Uh, it stars H- Haley Joe Osment. Yeah, it does. Joel? Joel. Joe. Haley, jo- Haley Joel Osment. I'll just rush it. It stars Haley Joel Osment. Um, I think it's Joel Osment. I think it's Joel. It stars Haley Joel Osment mm-hmm. as... A, kind of in the sixth sense era like he was pretty young in this one too yeah. oh that you meant like he, he had psychic powers <laughs> <laughs> no far from it it was a very grounded film <laughs> but he is basically like this grade school kid who starts this wave of good deeds and like changes the world um, and spoiler warning for people who haven't seen pay it forward and are planning on it can I guess what happens <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what my guess is. Okay. He does all these good deeds, and then you find out he's actually Hitler as like a kid. <laughs> 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 wow. And you've just been rooting for Hitler the yeah. entire time. It was it was a deep cry. It was a deep cry. It, yeah. it came from a place of of real confusion. <laughs> no, it's Hitler. I was gonna say I wanna be like that kid. <laughs> <laughs> now I wanna be like Hitler. <laughs> now I wanna be like Hitler. I'm fucked up. <laughs> See, Taika Waititi would take that idea and run with it. Yeah, oh, for sure. I feel like he already has. Yeah. Um, so how does it end? Yeah. So he puts out all these good deeds and he changes the world on like a massive scale. And then one day he's at school and there's a kid being bullied. 
and he steps in to stop the bullying and you're really cheering for him. You're like, man, this went well. And then he gets fucking stabbed. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> like a 10 year old kid just gets stabbed in the stomach and just falls over dead. It wasn't even the bully, it was like a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And I Sorry, you, I thought he had a gun. I tell you this, uh, when I was like eight years old, I was not fucking ready for that. No kidding. Oh. This is a Disney Channel movie. That makes so no, much sense. I don't think so. It's, a, it's got some actually very oh, heavy shit. elements. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, I've cried in a lot of movies now that I'm like thinking about oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely the first, the the first movie that like just br- I just broke, <laughs> and I'm like, oh okay, this movies can do this to you. Mm-hmm. I, I was not ready for that kid. To just- <laughs> Yeah, and then wow. later you That's find fair. out it was Hitler. <laughs> yeah, so, so I what, cried for Hitler. At what point do you find out it was Hitler? Yeah. Where's the joke? <laughs> Where's the joke? <laughs> Actually, that's what helped me stop crying. I'm like, oh, wait, it was, okay. It's just Hitler. It's, Hitler. it's Hitler. fine. This, is, this worked out. That's fair. <laughs> and so, you know the mo- the last movie I cried to? Well, I know the most recent visual media you cried to. Okay. Wasn't it um, Kitchen Nightmares you, or something? I, th- I think I think you're right. Did I you think, really buy into one of their sappy stories? I think I cried for Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah. What? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. yeah. What I don't happened? remember what the fan- what the story was. I don't remember. I mean, I think so- maybe Gordon came in and they, it, they were just like really good cooks. And didn't he like help like renovate the restaurant or something like that and you were like he's just so good well that's every kitchen nightmares what the fuck <laughs> you just well, cried not... on the general premise of <laughs> kitchen yeah, nightmares no, no it wasn't but it was that. like but sometimes the people are nightmares like right. sometimes the people working are awful but these people yeah. were like genuinely trying everything they could and like deserved it yeah i don't remember but it was one of those where they were just like genuinely okay. good people it just in like a failing business but okay. and had like just really gone through the shit Uh like someone had died or something like that and they had to like step up and yeah i I don't remember what it was but i just remember gordon ramsay just like really stepping up and doing like this kick-ass renovation and probably like i think like sitting down with the guy and i mean he gordon ramsay's so good at just like being a caring human like Mm -hmm. he'll just like take someone into the back room and just like hey talk to me like i'm here for you like i believe in you and i don't know yeah it got to me he's a he's a good guy but yeah. and 500 days of summer yeah right too i was gonna say yeah the most recent movie that i remember crying to uh was fault in our stars yeah what? i cry like a bitch every time I, when was the last time you watched fault in our stars i only saw it recently for the first time probably two really? years ago but did you recently watch 500 days of summer oh. it was a while ago oh. we should watch that again all right it's a good movie yeah that, another one i just was not ready for mm-hmm. yeah what it, scene I don't. I think it's when basically. So, spoiler alert for Five Hundred Days of Summer. Um, but I mean, so he's the whole movie is like building up this romantic relationship between him and Zoe Deschanel, mm-hmm. and eventually there's that. Or there's a scene where she's just like, eh, no, and is like with someone else. I think. Yeah, she ends up marrying someone. Yeah. Uh, even though, like, when she was with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, she she kept telling him that like she doesn't want to take it that far. Yeah. Like yeah, she yeah. was setting up these like really like stern boundaries and then she got married within like, a, I think like a year, which yeah. is like, no, like fault to her character. I really like that movie because it does make you think like, did she really do anything wrong? She really didn't know. Or right. she just found the person who made her change her mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, I mean, even like with Joseph Gordon Levitt, like, like he, she didn't do him dirty. Like, anything like that. They ended the relationship. He, yeah. yeah. And like she told him in the beginning, like, yo, like I, I'm not really wanting Mm -hmm. this level of, Mm -hmm. of relationship. Yeah. I just remember seeing the story from his perspective Mm -hmm. and there's a scene where she just comes off like, like, unbelievably cold yeah and like i was still in my mind like yeah she's gonna be the one for him and yeah, yeah i just like flipped it on its head and hit me hard the narrator warned you in the beginning this was yeah. a love story oh man you didn't listen i, I guess cried not. for so many of joseph gordon lovett's movies really i cried the first time i watched inception 50 50 50 50 oh i yeah i cried like a bitch for 50, 500 50. days of summer i don't think i cried too but like that's a, if you've cried to it the night before yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but wow that's kind of surprising yeah 50 50 always makes me cry oh no kidding it's yeah. so good and so sad when he's like screaming in the car i just can't handle it yeah, yeah that's heavy and i definitely cried for like every pokemon movie 
Really? Yeah. D- uh, can you tell me how much trauma you gained when Ash turned to stone? How many trauma a points? A lot. A lot. Yeah, that's like pretty much the beginning of the end, I think. Really? Oh, yeah. No. But honestly, what fucked me up more was watching all of the legendary birds fight in mm. the second one and all like killing each other. Sucks ass. Yeah. In the Celebi one, like the whole forest goes to shit and Celebi almost dies. That sucks. The fucking Jirachi one, Jirachi almost dies. That sucks. The Latios and Latias one, Latios literally fucking dies. It's not fun. So yeah, I've cried for like every Pokemon movie. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, totally yeah. fair. They really try to try to get you in the tear ducts. Yeah, sucks ass. But now they're on my leg, so they took my money and my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Just so the audience knows, she has tattoos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pokemon. Pokemon. Po- Pokemon. Pokemon. They didn't Pokemon. actually steal her leg. <laughs> <laughs> God damn you, Pokemon Corporation! <laughs> stole me leg. They've stolen me leg. <laughs> the Japanese, they took it. <laughs> they have it on display. <laughs> All right, are we going to talk about this dumb movie now or what? So what are we doing here? (laughs) (laughs) I like yours better. Thanks. (laughs) So last episode, we talked about creating an outline off podcast um, and kind of going through it here today. We explored kind of the idea of our storyline and we, you know, talked about the family coming together for dad's funeral. But at some point, dad showing up and turning up dead and what happens from there and so yeah put together an outline of what we thought the film might look like which we we did do the homework we were good we did our homework teach we did our for homework. once for i once didn't bring you lives. an apple or nothing but uh we half asked the homework for you yeah no kidding <laughs> we got most of it we got most of it we did get like a whole sheet of paper handwritten so you know not bad that's about a paragraph yeah typed but whatever <laughs> it's an outline do, you want, do y'all want me to read? Yeah. Read us. Give us the scoop. And we kept it very basic. We really tried to not elaborate, not get too crazy, just find things that made sense yep. and that we all agreed on and that worked together. And this is what we came up with. Paint us a word picture, Maddie. So we're going to start with our intro or whatever. David and Zoe arrive to dinner. Ding dong. The first thing to happen <laughs> in our film. How does that start? Um, I kind of like the idea of starting on like them just being showing up. Like mm. not much preamble before that. Just kind of like ding dong. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we need much Here more. Here we are. We're obviously Dressed late. casually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see it the other way too, where yeah. we spend a little bit more time. Yeah, I don't I don't think we need much preamble before David and Zoe knock on the door and arrive at the house. You know, that's where the story kind of starts anyway. So what's next? Um, then we introduce the characters. We can do our lazy Susan idea. Mm-hmm. Get to know everybody, really introduce the audience to every single character and why they all suck. They're like in the mudroom in kind of the the foyer. Mm-hmm. Break we'll, we'll break that down somehow. Yeah. Okay. This is also when we can do like our spotlight idea. Yep. Can do just like a really fun, unique way to introduce mm-hmm. yeah. everybody yeah. and get to know everything you need to know quick and easy. I'm very much looking forward to that. And then we lead into bickering, mm-hmm. the bickering section. <laughs> the bickering section. So we've got some subcategories. We've got David versus Donnie. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> in this corner. Um, we have written down, Donnie hates that David doesn't want to be in the family, and David doesn't feel accepted by the family. Mm-hmm. And that conflict really drives a rift between these two lowly brothers. Lowly little boys. Yeah, so I like the idea. We've arrived. We've introduced the characters like by name and by reputation, and now we start to explore kind of their interpersonal relationships with each other. Yeah. And just kind of have this little conversational section as people kind of start to mill in and, and yeah, start to learn what, what their relationship is like. Yeah. Here's all the people. Here's the relationships they have. Yeah. Just go on. We're getting to know them as we go in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we picked a couple of pairings to highlight. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're showing the cards and now we're going to shuffle them around and pair them. Yeah. So our next subcategory is Carol thinking she deserves more condolences, which I still think is kind of whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If we can, if we can sneak her in. I I think that's true to her character based off like how we written her. Mm -hmm. Um, Very just 
woe is me. I mean, like, granted, her husband did die, but like, I feel like there's like a level of like they're caring, but they're caring in their own way. They're not. They're not. Yeah, I mean, I think she's kind of vain and selfish. So yeah. when her whole family is like, "Well, I didn't know this. Well, I didn't know that. Well, what about this?" and she she's, goes, "Well, my husband is fucking dead. Yeah, will yeah. someone get me a drink or yeah. something?" Yeah. Um, and then our final category, we have Nicole meeting Zoe and being generally weird. I love. I'm so excited for creepy Nicole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want Nicole to be so up putting. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I am really liking the idea or, or or i had a thought of like her character as kind of like wanting to be like the cool person in the family to like zoe okay you know she's just like she's really trying to show off mm-hmm. as like here follow me kid like this i'll show you the streets around these sure these cats yeah That's fair. you know but zoe doesn't want that and zoe does not want yeah that. nicole's <laughs> yeah. just like hey yeah. come here i think there's like a level of like she thinks the family likes her more than she does yeah and, but can, she hates donnie i can totally, yeah, totally. see that like yeah. nicole is like this just fucking weirdo yeah like just creepy and like off-putting and all this but i can totally see her just being like oh don't worry you stick with me honey i yeah. i know these fools like the back of my hand yeah. you'll be just fine with me very oblivious that's uh, funny that you guys are like just coming to this because i feel like that's how i've thought of her the whole time like from that's like fair. the very beginning. I but mean, that's it makes just interesting. It makes sense. I, I, I just don't know if I've ever said it out loud. Yeah, I don't think it, I ever said it out loud. For sure, either. interesting. Maybe, and maybe we have, and maybe I just forgot. But it's a good reiteration of like, yeah. hey, I'm glad we're all on the same page of like yeah. how we see Nicole as mm-hmm. just kind of this <laughs> weirdo. Weirdo. Here's a little peek behind the curtain. We don't really write anything down. Yeah. So because <laughs> we always say, why? Why would we write it down when it's recorded? It's recorded. Yeah. <laughs> and and then, then we don't listen to our recordings. <laughs> and then we forget. Yeah. So well, so we do listen to our recordings because we edit them. At least once. At least right. once. <laughs> <laughs> Solid once. I've been wanting to bring this up for a while and mm-hmm. I don't really want to talk about it more than this, but uh there's a really good video essay mm-hmm. um about Stranger Things and its story structure. Um and it goes into how each of the characters are introduced and how in like the first couple episodes of stranger things, whenever you meet a new character, Mm -hmm. they're in some sort of an argument. Oh, that's fair. They're in some sort of a conflict. Yeah, I can see that. And the video essay, I definitely recommend it. I will link it in the description. Please do. Uh, It just really goes into the fact that like when someone's in an argument, Mm -hmm. it shows you so quickly, like how they truly feel. Yeah. And so it gives you just like that immediate insight into their motivations and their ideals. And so I really support this idea of like starting off with some bickering yeah. and just really pitting people against each other right away. Totally. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Um, then we have a couple more. Um, this is kind of the appetizers portion, but we've got Nicole plus Zoe equals tits, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's explain that one a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah explain, you, explain that one to us. No, I want to explain it. I want to have boobies in our movie. Yeah, and we, and we got to give Maddie what she wants. So I just think it would be fun to have boobies. Uh-huh. So I think Nicole would totally be the type to like corner Zoe and be like, hey, check out this weird thing. Do you think it's yeah. like cancer? Do you think I should go get it checked? Oh my God. Mm-hmm. And Zoe not to be into it. Mm-hmm. I just think it would be a funny way to have tits and like not sexualize them at all. Yeah. Just like fucking tits. Tits are cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. I've had another idea and we don't have to go into this and I don't know if this is like sexualization, but I was thinking of a motivation for why that scene also might happen mm. is because we've gone into like the motivation for Nicole wanting to kill Donnie is she feels that he's trying to make the perfect family and like feels that he's kind of trying to like mold her mm-hmm. and she doesn't want to fit that mold. And so I could almost see it like, what, am I not good enough for him? Like, are these not good enough for him? I could see that. That's yeah. fair. And I don't know if that like brings it to too sexual of a place, but I can totally see that as a motivation. I can too. We have Lonnie and Johnny equal (laughs) schmokin. Getting schmokin. Getting smoked. (laughs) What do you see for this? For the smoking scene? Mm -hmm. I guess because the way we, I saw this in a lot of different ways. I feel like it's, it's changed constantly as we're kind of molding these characters. Mm -hmm. The way Johnny is now, he's very timid. He's very, you know, kind of doing his own thing, kind of a dork. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't imagine him wanting to smoke grass. Right. <laughs> but I could also see him being a little bit intrigued and having a little bit of curiosity towards it. You know, maybe initially not wanting to smoke weed, 
but like the 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 drag of the whatever uh Lonnie is smoking kind of entices him a little bit more to the point where he's like, all right, I'll I'll take a, I'll take a hit. I'll take a puff. Whatever. For sure. I'm cool. Yeah. I can yeah. hang. Yeah. yeah. Can, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> Downtown Coolsville. Population. <laughs> us. <laughs> That's such a great quote. I, I love it. From the Iron Giant. Recommend it. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's kind of how I imagine this scene of like Lonnie not Lonnie offering, not pressuring. And then Johnny giving in to his own like weird peer pressure on himself. <laughs> yeah, I think he kind of has a crush on Lonnie. So you, we're still thinking that he has a crush on his own. I think an admiration yeah. is maybe a safer okay. way to say that. Okay. Yeah, not like, yeah, not like sexual. She's, yeah, like she's cool. Like she's a cool older chick. Yeah. She's not at all like his parents. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Oh yeah, I bet he loves her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I can see it almost like he's really nervous and weird, but in front of Lonnie, he's kind of like, yeah, of course I've smoked weed. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, like tries to be cool. <laughs> tries, tries to impress. Yeah. yeah totally, totally. And I could see her like feeding off of that and being like, oh, I don't think you actually got any. Do you want... Do you want another hit? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I can see I can that, see that too, like, yeah. playing off of each other. Yeah, yeah, like, I can see her just being, like, super chill and just, like, fucking with him. Yeah. And just, like, trying to, like, kind of be, like, almost an older sister. Yeah. Just, like, hey, come on, kid. Like, you want to go out to the garage? We we're, we both look bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's far too eager to please. <laughs> yeah. No and also bored. Also and bored. also bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about as much as I see of it is she's just kind of like, hey, Let's, uh, this, this, this room sucks. <laughs> I yeah. imagine. Okay. So I thought about this. I think it'd be really funny if Donnie does not like smoking of the marijuana. That tracks. Yeah. That makes sense. I think it'd be really funny if he catches Johnny and Lonnie smoking of the marijuana gets upset. Don't dive too much into it. And then at the end of our film, we talked about our ending where they're like digging up the grave. It'd be funny if Lonnie sparked up like a joint as they're like digging and then passes it to Donnie. And, and he smokes yeah, it. Yeah, Donnie just like looks <laughs> grabs it. That would be cute. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I just That's how I imagine. I like the ending, but I don't know how much I want to dwell on like him f- like finding them smoking weed, you know? Like I yeah. think it's almost funnier for the audience just to know because mm-hmm. then like they can be acting really weird, but right. no one on the in the table knows mm. that they're stone. Yeah, I'm. T- I'm. I see that. Yeah, for that's sure. That's kind of. But I like the idea of like him then being the one who's like needs to get stoned. Yeah, because <laughs> it's been a long fucking day. Right. Well, and we could totally accomplish that. You know, even if they're at at dinner, because I'm yeah. sure the family knows that Lonnie's a stoner. Yeah. Right. One hundred percent, they know. And so, I mean, he could just dig on her. Yeah. You know, if they're having a conversation at dinner, he could be like. Oh, you know, hey Johnny, don't turn into a burnout like your freaking aunt over here. Yeah. She's yeah. she's gonna amount to nothing. Always smoking the reefer. I can I can I can see that. And I then just like some that. little like throwaway joke like that, just to get his disapproval yeah. into the audience's eye. Mm-hmm. And then later, he's gone through all the shit and he needs a drag. And then it's haha. Yeah, he's grown. He's changed. She I, like lights it for him. Yeah, that would be cute. Can I pose an argument for the other side? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what if that was the reason why Johnny's like forced into this little, you know, shenanigans that they're going through? Cause like Donnie's so fucking pissed. He's like, I'm going to show you what it takes to be a real member of society or whatever. Teach him some character. Yeah. I'm going to teach you our family tradition. And then like, you know, it's like, just, just, you know, dragging him along or whatever. Right. And then again, referencing the grave scene, you see Lonnie giving Donnie uh the joint and then you see Johnny like above just kind of like watching them dig the grave and like s- like kind of pissed cuz he sees his dad smoking weed just like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> yeah that's fair <laughs> yeah that could work that could work <laughs> i so i can imagine that i can also imagine the other way too in yeah. fact i think the other way is probably maybe the better one i'm not sure we I can think, talk about it yeah that kind of confused me but I'd be willing to hear more options too. For sure. But should we continue on? Yeah. So what? Uh, so what else is happening during appetizers? Oh yeah. We've got Carol plus David. Mm. David doesn't have much to say. Mm. Carol doesn't really have much to say. They're kind of just both 
miserable and awkward. Yeah, just like the worst, like yeah. mother son small talk. I think that really that's more for like to see where a character's at and yeah. kind of the relationship he has with like you know his parents and and his siblings. Yeah, um, I feel like you, you know even if you weren't close to your siblings, you'd still fight out of habit. Uh, but with your parents, sometimes you just kind of shut down. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I really think that's. Uh, a, a moment that we could really use to give our characters some dimension. Mm -hmm. Our characters some dimension. I also Agreed. love the idea because during, so we're, and we kind of talked about this appetizer section as, you know, there's Lonnie and Johnny, uh, there's Nicole and Zoe mm -hmm. as a pair, and there's now David and his mother as a pair. And these are th kind of three conversations or activities that are all kind of happening simultaneously. And this is what I really loved about the bubble and why I bring it up because like being able to like cut between those and like find a joke and cut back and you mm -hmm. know cutting between all three of those conversations kind of simultaneously mm -hmm. I think will be a lot of fun and I think that like the chaos of the two smoking weed and mm -hmm. Zoe getting flashed in the kitchen and now like this quiet ass conversation with David and his mom mm -hmm. can be just like perfect for smash cuts of like something crazy happens and then we just cut into how's work yeah good yeah, I think I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, so I think that is a fun like dichotomy of energy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, and then we kind of go into the dinner. Can I can I say I wanted to throw out that I really think we also need to like show emphasis throughout like the beginning scene before we introduce the body. Um, how important the father was to the family by that i mean that i think we need to just really uh give uh ronnie a looming presence over the family because i think it'd be really funny that like you're kind of having this idea of like this like in the beginning of this like very powerful man very scary man and then we get to the dinner and he's a corpse <laughs> right he's scary not not scary, but like he's high up there, yeah. you know. Like he's For regarded sure. highly, highly revered. There's, right. there's a level of like intimidation, and then to, the, to he, the dinner, he's just a, he's just a bag of flesh. He's nothing. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. I we, think that'd be really fun to play with. Absolutely. Yeah, we definitely need to pepper in how like big of a personality this guy had, yeah, and yeah. like how big of an effect in this family he was, like how much of a leader he was. Right. I, I think it'd be really fun too to play with like some of the characters like interchanging present tense and past tense pronouns like dad is my hero yeah, yeah, yeah dad right. is my hero uh it's like uh, you know he's dead yeah like donnie i feel like would like use a lot of present tense pronouns. that would be a funny easter egg yeah yeah totally. and then like david even though he just like found out the body he's already using was right yeah was. totally yeah, yeah yeah oh i love that totally and then i think it'd be really cool to have uh Lonnie kind of interchange that. Yeah. But then like catches like herself doing that. So almost kind of like she's still grieving. Right. You, you really know? like get a glimpse into how they like subconsciously feel about it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. Austin. Yeah. That's good writing. That's a really good Thanks, idea. Dad. <laughs> yeah. That was a really good idea. Did I, like, I just I get, like did I just get the thumbs up from Poppy? The big thumbs and me. up. Oh, from two Poppy. From yeah. your puppies. <laughs> from Mama Poppy. From Mama, Poppies. Mama Poppy. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that, that the cool thing about Ronnie, this is gonna sound really edgy. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about Ronnie is that you learn everything about him through the other characters. That is very cool. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, oh God, I'm loving the idea more of like, like, like uh, back to like having this big character, this very like, uh, again, like not scary. And maybe there is a little bit of fear in there. Maybe there's a little bit of intimidation and just reduced down to like a, bag of bones that has his face in in a plate of mashed right. potatoes yeah oh yeah like that that's like the <laughs> comedy, uh, <that> comedy. <laughs> <laughs> this is genius <laughs> <laughs> he's he's in <laughs> he was this amazing man and now he's in his mashed potatoes yeah. <laughs> that's, like that's comedy how <laughs> <laughs> oh, the king has fallen <laughs> we all die we all play right yes <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Dad. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but before all this, the dead father still has to show up to dinner. <laughs> yes. So basically, Donnie brings his dead father, Ronnie, as a corpse to dinner for one last meal uh -huh. with the family. 
And that's what sparks all of the different arguments between like Zoe and David and Carol and Donnie yeah. and yeah. Lonnie and Johnny just freaking out and Nicole being worried that she's going to get caught yeah. for having killed him. Right. So it just kind of opens up all those eggshells and they all freak out and start to argue and all that good stuff. And, you know, this is crazy, but it's also, you know, kind of the story that we're building up for. And uh, truth be told, dear listeners, as we were writing this uh, this outline, we... Uh, we failed you. We- <laughs> 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 and we're sorry. We knew how we wanted the story to start, and we knew how we wanted it to end. And we knew kind of a lot of the innards, but uh, we, co- we couldn't quite land on a turning point. We mm-hmm. couldn't get our big O... Let's yeah. just call it what it is. <laughs> we were looking we were looking for a climax. Yeah. Which I think would be a great title for this episode, by the looking way. Looking for a climax. Fuck Love yeah. That. <laughs> I've been thinking about that all day. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm also thinking about looking for a climax all day. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, I just won't give it up, Swing. (laughs) (laughs) But we were never really sure. We basically wrote down like, okay, and then something happens. Something climactic happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I don't know. Has anyone had any thoughts like on what what might occur? What might turn the tides of the story? Yeah, I have I have a thought. As I'm going, I feel like I'm seeing a little bit more here. Like our resolution, our climax that we were talking about, Mm -hmm. we find out uh, that the father um, kind of pitted the children against each other. Okay. Uh, and I think we can get that information from Carol. Uh, like, like they're just like bickering back and forth about the various things that like, you know, dad did like dad loved you more. Cause he always did this. Like, sure. What the fuck are you talking about? Dad did that more. And then Carol, it's like, he loved you the same amount. He just wanted, or, you know, he just wanted to see which one of you wanted yeah, it the yeah. most. <laughs> Who wanted it the most? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he did that on purpose to yeah. test you. And then there's like that resolution of like, oh, and then cuts burying the body. Yeah, and then that's a good way to make them not care about how properly the body is taken yeah. care of. Yeah. So yeah. we could make it like a funny like, fuck dad. Yeah. Like all the siblings like smoking a joint like get him the fuck out of yeah. here. Just throw some dirt on him. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be great funny. for Donnie to like say like, oh, I'm not gonna smoke weed. You know how dad felt, felt about that. Right. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> right. And then literally smoking a fucking joint in his grave. Right. Like what? Dude, <laughs> that'd they, be great. All, they all come together Together with their fuck dad energy yeah, yeah absolutely all right now we've got our characters walking off into the sunset <laughs> yeah. well that's our something climactic happens yeah there we go yeah, that kind of wraps up our ending too basically the siblings find out that the dad was a bad guy pretty yeah. much yeah they all turn against him mm-hmm. demonized dad but yeah. they all still need to do this ritual they yeah. need to like fulfill their promise to him they're just don't need to do it well. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've been really trying to figure out how we take this, like, proper ritual into, like, slapstick body heist, like, drop dad mm-hmm. down the stairs. And not necessarily that far, mm-hmm. but, like, I think it'll be funny to, like, just, like, bump his head on a door frame and shit like that, you know? It would be funny if, like, the way they transport the body uh, covertly is they wrap it inside a rug, right? Yeah. And we get a little bit familiar with this rug. Um, and as they're about to, you know, bury the body, uh, they're about to like push in the body into like the grave. They're not going to like set it down. And Diane's like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Save the rug. That's my rug. (laughs) 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 Or Carol. (laughs) Or or Carol. Wouldn't it be great if they like go to push the body in and we like get an insert shot of her like stepping on the edge (laughs) so that the body like unravels and he falls down super ragdoll and she's like, that's my good rug. (laughs) Yeah. She's like bundling it back up. (laughs) That would be good. That would be good. That'd be funny. Yeah. I'm for it. I'm still very attached to our final shot as well, which I guess is kind of a good ending Mm -hmm. as the family pushing the body into the grave that they've dug and revealing from black this family standing triumphant from like a low angle Mm -hmm. that they've vanquished their father and they have for lack of a better term bonded Mm. over this experience yeah they dug themselves out of their own grave yeah and it's like they're still not gonna be friends yeah Yeah, like i need that to be clear like uh, that's that's i think that's ambiguous like i don't think we have to make it clear like hey guys we're gonna go get ice cream after this yeah i think there's just like this mutual respect of like 
we went through some shit. Yeah. We yeah. don't have to. Yeah. I don't think we have to have like a fairy story, fairy book ending. Yeah. You know? At least they respect each other. At yeah. The end. I really like that ending because it's a great transition. We can literally mm. transition that from anywhere. If even like from the table, they're like, man, dad was kind of a dick. Boom. F- smash to black and then body gets pushed in a hole like sure that's the joke and then the movie's over like, yeah. so or it can it can literally come from anywhere um but then we reveal our kind of three characters mm-hmm. we have that time to like share a moment with them and then they walk off and that's like a whole shot and a great beat and it's a great resolution yeah, yeah. I'm totally for it and uh it's nice and simple yeah. And I can just like see it so clearly in my yeah. head. I can oh, see yeah. how I want the credits to look very clearly. Ooh, hell yeah! I'm Maybe so, I should do a sketch. I was yeah. just gonna say you should draw a storyboard of that because I think I have a little bit of a hard time seeing it. Hell yeah, I'll do and that. The way you described it, I'm seeing it as one way, but I feel like I'm that's not the right way for sure. So I just want to like I'll confirm. draw yeah picture. Yeah, yeah. I just want to confirm if I'm thinking of it correctly. I've never <laughs> shot at night. Well, I've never, I mean, I've shot at night, but I've never shot like an outside nighttime, like moonlight shot. That's a lie. You have. Have I? Yeah. Oh, I have. We have. We have. We, so uh, yeah, Austin and I um, did for Skills USA. Yeah. It was a competition for our college. It's our film called Rise. Yeah. Uh, You'll find it in our uh, past films playlist on the Room Tone YouTube channel. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and we shot uh, a guy sitting at a bonfire, yeah. looking oh, out yeah. at the stars. Yeah, I actually, I that was one of my very first like VFX shots. Yeah, because yeah. we had to come, we had to put yeah. in the stars in the sky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a great look. Is like the nighttime moonlight, like blue tones, top light down. Yeah, I agree. I think it, it has a lot of potential to be like really stylized. Okay. Yeah, and I'm excited for like the three of us to do that. Yeah, yeah. Did they you do. also <laughs> see in the dark for? What was it? That murder one that you guys did for Red Eye that you two did? In the oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Lane, well, I, think me you're, yeah. I think you're lying to the yeah, audience. Yeah, you're just right a liar. Now. I guess I'm just a liar. I think we have a stronger visual on, on the story uh, and where we wanted to go, and I'm really excited to explore further. Me too. Yeah. We got these story beats. Yeah. I'm starting to see like the progression, the through lines. Yeah. I think we're really on the same page too. It I feels too. like we are, which is cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad that we've gotten to that point. Yeah. I, I'm excited. I wonder, I'm curious if, uh, if the audience has felt the same way. Mm. You know, yeah. like, like, I feel like, you know, Austin isn't seeing exactly what Swain's seen, or, you know, I don't think Swain is seeing exactly what Maddie's seen. Yeah, you know? that would be interesting. I, l- let us know in the comments. We want more viewer interaction. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'd, I'd be interested if anyone has like a movie or TV show or just even a scene. If you have something that this has reminded you of that we haven't talked about, I would love to get some of those recommendations. Same. So if you have a movie or a TV show that our project kind of reminds you of, send it our way because uh, we love to get you know as much inspiration as we can. So that'd be oh, fun. Yeah. You guys, can we talk about dinner theater? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know if we've really gone into this on the podcast, but the three of us have a very, very fun and wholesome tradition. Yeah. We do. So every so often, uh, Swain, Maddie, and I, we get together uh, and we take turns picking a movie uh, that we want the other to see. And with that movie, we make and cook a dish together with the theme from that movie. Yeah. We try to do like a reference as, as much as we can. So, like, if they're eating, like, a, a dish within the movie, we'd try to cook that dish. That specific dish. Yeah. yeah. But we've ran into a couple of scenarios where, like, they don't really, uh, uh, no one's really eating anything. So, we'll we'll do, like, a theme. So, uh, I'm trying to remember, like, some of, like, the really specific ones. I can list some. Mm, yeah. yeah. What was the first one that we did? Because I feel like that was probably very indicative. Yeah. Um, the first thing I have written down is that you chose that we watch Fantastic Mr. Fox and we made apple tarts. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. I think that was our earliest one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we tried after some time. We tried to, like, trace it back and actually make a history because, like I said, we don't write shit down. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we tried to, like, kind of crawl back into our memories and try to remember the sequence that we... We've done at least 11, though. Yeah, that's a sol- that's solid. That's a good amount. At least that we yeah. remember. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. That's awesome. That's so fun. And our latest was Iron Giant. Yep. And we made uh, smash burgers. And Clash- milkshakes. Yep. Smash burgers and milkshakes. Classic mm. diner food. Yeah. Because uh, his mother works at the local diner. 
and uh, and he shakes off the uh, government agent by putting laxatives in his yeah, milkshakes, which we I added the chocolate shavings to our milkshakes. Oh, because it's Choco Lax. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, no wonder I was shitting my brain. So yeah, well, no, that was a different shit. reason. Yeah. <laughs> which is actually very funny because on this list also. Um, I recommended that we watch Rat Race, mm -hmm. and I brought that to the party, and uh, we made milkshakes for that as well. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, John Lovitz's character slips sleeping pills into milkshakes for his family. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you're looking for something to drug somebody. Mm -hmm. Do you want to name the last five we've done? The most recent ones? Yeah. So we did Iron Giant, which is smash burgers and milkshakes. Um, and then we watched Seven, which was Swain's recommendation. Oh, that was perfect. Yeah. And we had spaghetti and meatballs. Which was so fucking visceral. Yeah, yeah. it was the worst. And then it was you, Austin, or Peza chose Grand Budapest Hotel, and mm -hmm. we had Swedish meatballs. Mm, that's right. Another one that's... Or did they actually have Swedish meatballs no, in the movie? No, it was themed. Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. just kind of... It takes place in Sweden. I think we were going to, like, do the desserts at one point, but we realized it was just going to be, like, a lot of work. Sure. And yeah. I I think we were at the time like, yeah, we just kind of want to watch the movie and eat something. We don't want to do a whole like thing. I yeah. Think yeah we like working. we like cooking, but yeah. we don't like spending three hours cooking. Mm. The one before that was one I chose and it was Black Swan mm -hmm. and we made cupcakes that had vaginas on them we and they were delicious. Oh, we yes. ate pussy that night. Yep. We did. <laughs> we ate pussy like, like a motherfucker. Like everyone should. <laughs> yeah. Eat pussy all day. Yeah. PSA from Room Tone Podcast. <laughs> eat pussy. Eat pussy. Eat, hashtag eat more pussy. <laughs> Sponsored by Wee Man's Chronic Tacos. <laughs> uh, what are some other honorable mentions? Oh, for the goldfinch, we made like French toast and oh, breakfast yeah. food. That was the best reference that too. Was. Yeah. Because why was that? Because he had bread and sugar. Yeah. That, that yeah. was all he had to offer him. Like the poor Russian kid. Yeah. yeah. All he could <laughs> offer him was bread, bread and, and sugar. sugar. <laughs> so we made French toast. We had breakfast for dinner. That was yeah. like the best night ever. Yeah, it that was. was yummy. And we did watch Django and we got like Southern, Southern food. Comfort Food. Yeah. That yeah. was very good too. That was a great night. Mm hmm. So I, I, I recommend that to anyone out there. It's a really yeah. it's a really immersive way to recommend movies to your friends. It's just a fun time. Like it you're, is. you're just hanging out, making food together, and watching a sweet flick. Fuck yeah, yeah. You get some good ass food and some good ass entertainment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So and I was laughing. Um I thought it'd be really funny to bring this up because we watched this just the other night and you know i thought it would be really fun to like make an instagram story you know we're really trying to get into our <laughs> social media and so i was like let's the milkshake scene is coming up we've got our milkshakes in hand you know like let's take a picture of our milkshakes and their milkshakes and and we can send it out there and tell the people what we're up to but three photographers <laughs> Could not manage to get a good picture of milkshakes. No. We could not I be just bothered. Don't care. Exactly. Yeah. None of us. I. Yeah. I. I just love that. Like the three of us have such a capacity to yeah. take an amazing photo and like do it right. But social media is so fucking stupid. Well, look, can we also point out the fact that we were also drinking our milkshakes? Oh yeah, they and, were half gone. And yeah, they're like half gone, and we're like, we can't get a good photo with half milkshakes. Yeah, you can't. And we didn't want like to make another full milkshake. <laughs> We already had like so much food. We had the burger and fries. It was like, oh God. So I guess our message to you, dear listener, is we tried. Yeah, we tried. We really did. But yeah, I've just had a really good time uh, Same. making food and watching movies with you fools. I agree. Fudge, yeah. And now I'm excited to make a movie with you. Fudge, yeah. Mm -hmm. About food. Well, with around food. Around food. <laughs> with, Fudge, yeah. With dead bodies. <laughs> Fudge, yeah. And, and some boobies. Oh my god, you guys, I was watching videos today of people finding dead bodies on Everest. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Maddie is a psychopath. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> That's my douche jar. <laughs> psychopath <laughs> jar. <laughs> yeah. They just put that shit on YouTube. <laughs> what? So <laughs> find bodies what, on Mount Everest. What are you watching? Like body cam footage? <laughs> <laughs> no, just like people who are climbing Mount Everest yeah. and have like a body cam or yeah, like a recording yeah. them climbing Everest. Yeah. They'll just come across someone who died on Mount Everest and is just like frozen in place. They're oh, supposed to leave them there. 
because it's it's dead weight. Right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, so there are a lot of videos on YouTube of like coming across dead bodies. It's pretty mm. sexy. Can you imagine like the body that's like the closest to the starting point? <laughs> right. Like, oh, this guy sucked. <laughs> yeah. Like imagine it's like right next to the starting right. point. <laughs> he <I'm> tripped. A- <laughs> <laughs> and imagine you have an entire climb ahead of you. And you're just passing by dead bodies. I know. Uh, like, how people have epic. not made this. Yeah. Like, how do you continue having the encouragement to move forward as you're seeing literal dead bodies from people who had the same ambitions as you did? Yeah. I oh, want to, yeah. like, f- hear more interviews of people who have climbed Everest. It's very interesting. Would you ever? No, fuck that. No. I'm not active at all. <laughs> I, can see, I can see you, like, if you wanted it enough, I could see you training for it. I That's fair. That. Maybe a little one. I would climb like a little mountain. I don't need a those. little Mount Everest. I don't need like the trophy. <laughs> the one in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, could cl- I could climb MGM Grand. <laughs> Hell yeah. Which go to Las Vegas? I never want to go back to Las Vegas. Viva. What? Really? I didn't have a good time. Viva. How old were you? Uh, twenty one. What? Yeah, I I didn't have. Oh, I mean, I passed by Vegas. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Pause. Oh, on your school trip? <laughs> no. <laughs> Vegas sucked. I saw it out the window. Yeah. Pause. I uh, was going with my friends. It was a group of my friends. We drove past. We timed our trip poorly. And so we're like, okay, well, we better find something to do to blow off some right, time. Right. And we stopped in Vegas. And the amount of time that we spent there, I just like. It felt so meh. It, it felt like if you didn't have like a lot of money, that y- you really wouldn't have a good time. Were you in like the strip? Yeah. Oh. Huh. I love Las Vegas. I'm like a. I would love to go to the Las Vegas again. Have you? Oh, so you've been there before? Mm-hmm. I've never been. Yeah, really? I really want to take him. Yeah. Pop his Vegas cherry. Yeah. Pop my pop my cherry. I would go with you two. Fuck yeah. 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 I think we would make it fun. Would you gamble? Do you a like little to bit. gamble? No. Hmm. <laughs> I, I no, I don't did. like to gamble. I didn't think you did. But I would gamble in mm-hmm. Vegas because you're in Vegas. You're in Vegas like, that's true. but you would have. <laughs> but what's okay? Let me let me ask you. What's your limit? What's your cap? Like, right. are you trying to like ball out in Vegas? No, fuck that shit. No, I would set like a daily max. Like, I can gamble mm-hmm. fifty bucks today. Really? And really? like, if I lose it all, cool. If I win a thousand dollars, cool. That's tomorrow, the way to do it. I'll still. If I decide I want to gamble again tomorrow, I'll have a fifty dollar limit again. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the way to do it. Yeah, it's like stocks. You have to be okay with losing it, and you have to be aware of when you want to turn away and say, right. "All right, well, that's enough of that." Yeah, yeah. No, I love Vegas purely because of the shows. And the restaurants and the hotels and like the entertainment is so beautiful. You know what? That's probably that was probably my problem. Um, we got there at like two a.m. Uh, oh, we yeah. went to like two or three casinos. Yeah. Um, like along the strip, and it was like okay. Uh, we didn't see any shows. It, it wasn't planned. It was like, hey, we're here. Let's do some gambling. Yeah, I would imagine stopping in Vegas isn't great. Yeah. But yeah, like going to Vegas is Making fun. a trip of it yeah. Yeah. sounds great. And especially with like people whose like goals and ambitions align with yours. Mm-hmm. Like I'd hate to go with like a group of like people who want to like just go out and like get drunk and just oh, like. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like walk the strip until 5 a.m. like smashing beer bottles. Like yeah, I would like, fucking kill myself. Yeah, like let's not pretend there are a lot of awful people in Vegas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like Vegas could very easily become like the worst place to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we can find a way to wrap this up. That's true. Homies, we're going to go get Taco Bell. Yeah, I think we're done here today. Who, who else is hungry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I had a great time chatting with y'all. Yeah. But, but I, think it's, I think it's time to end it. Or we end it. Let's yeah, end it. Yeah, yeah. And so, like for the viewers, Taco Bell has been out of commission for the last like month. So oh God, yeah. in our in our area. Yeah, yeah. So we're and it's back, bitches. It's back. So we're fucking going. We're gonna go live moss. Yeah. Uh, but before we do, I think we should uh, pause for room tone. <laughs> <laughs>